Hey guys, it's Kevin here with another tutorial. This one's going to be very similar to the previous one, except that I'm going to uh, show off a couple more tools that I really like uh, from the tool set. So here we are with uh, the Malcolm Rig again, only this time it is the female mod version, which is by Josh Sobel. Um, and just uh, before we start off, just a quick tip on this particular character. Um, part of the mod is done just by scaling certain controls. So if you do um, what I like to do, which is often default the controls like that, uh, if you select the whole character and uh, default the controls, you'll notice uh, what happens. So um, a lot of these, let me open up the picker here, a lot of these spine controls, these guys here, are actually just tra are just uh, scaled and rotated to create this mod. Uh, same thing with the leg controls here and the fingers. Um, so just a quick tip if you're going to use her, um, I use the selection set to make a, a set of all the controls that are actually changed. And uh, I keyed them in negative 10. And then as I go through and animate, um, I'll just go back um, if I set a key or if I set something to default, I'll just open up the graph editor and uh, select the scale keys and just um, delete them all uh, and leave the ones here at negative 10. So that's just a quick tip to, uh, to keep in mind before you start using her. Uh, okay, so to start off, um, this is actually a file from my 11 second club. Uh, submission from back in February. So if I scale through here, you'll see um, you'll see my blocking uh, of the first part of the dialogue, which is this part here. We can switch over to the uh, cam main. So this guy here. So yeah, this is my first part of the blocking here. And from here on out, you hear footsteps, like the character's running away. So I wanted her to kind of run in a really wacky zigzag style all the way to the store. I wanted it to be really extreme, kind of Looney Tunes style. This was actually my kind of a test animation to see how far I could push this rig. So it was a lot of fun to do. So at this stage, when I had blocked it out, I knew I wanted her to do this crazy run to the door. Um, and obviously, I didn't want to do it by moving each control IK uh, individually. So I used the repo trick like we looked at last time. But before I did that even, uh, what I did was I, I uh, put the character here at default pose and then uh, I used the anim library to drop on uh, different run cycles because I wanted to use a mixture of three or four different run cycles so they weren't, so it wasn't the exact same run all the way there. So I'm going to open up the anim library Go to the Mandy character, it's just what I named her. <laughs> um, and then I'm going to select my body. So these are the only controls that I actually want the run to be applied to. So you see I already have some runs saved up here, so I'm going to go to Import Anim. Uh, I'm going to click Run 1, and you'll know it's selected correctly when you see it up here, Run 1. And then you can do Test This Existence, and it will show you that the data matches up perfectly, so it's going to work. And just in case you want to apply this to a different rig, then you can actually specify the namespace here. So I could use these runs on the Malcolm rig as well. Okay, I'm going to do insert so that the run gets placed right where my uh, timeline is set. Let's scale down the timeline here. Insert, current frame, and we're going to do selection only so that the uh, data from this run is um, imported only on these controls. So I'm going to do import and there's that. So this is kind of a wacky uh, feet spin in the air type of run. Uh, and these aren't the prettiest runs, they're pretty rough but it's a, a really great starting point. Um, so then I'm going to go a few frames further and grab run number two. It's set here. I'm going to import there's another run. It's a little bit more normal of the wacky runs. She's just kind of running along. 
still very far fetched. Go a few a few more frames here. Drop on number three. For this run, I wanted a, a very stylized run, where the waist stays basically in the same space, not a whole lot of up and down, and the legs actually stretch out to reach the floor and just kind of pinwheel around. And each of these cycles is, is pretty much one or two cycles only, so I can kind of loop them as I need. And then run four, and I'll import that here. So then this one's just kind of a uh, it's uh, this run here, the second run, looped, and I gradually rotated all four or five of her spine controls to kind of start rotating forward as she ran. And it's super messy, probably the messiest of all four, so it'll take a lot of cleanup, but I kind of wanted ridiculous flailing arms and just kind of random stuff just for the fun of it. Um, so now that I got all my run cycles in here, um, they're all happening right on top of the master controller. Uh, so we'll open up the picker here. And I think I will turn on my curves. I can see. I'll do the basic. Cool. So. This part is kind of happening off camera. Um, we'll split it here so I can... Open up the main camera. So as soon as the camera pans over, I want to see her kind of running. So I take my par, move it over here. Just kind of get the basic uh, placement of where I want her. So this par trick is super useful. And this is a good example of uh, using the, the par trick um, in an actually real real scene scenario as opposed to last time where I just did a simple uh, flip around a pole. This is actually not happening on one axis, it's happening all over the place. So this is a, a little more advanced example of how that would work. So I can use the par trick just to kind of place her where I want her in screen space. So I know when she does her kind of pinwheel with her legs, this is kind of where I want her to be. And then when she lands, I'll have her run screen right. And again, this can be kind of quick and rough. And it's great because I'm only using this one control and I've still got the run cycle happening on her actual controls. So I'm not real concerned right now. I'm just kind of roughing it out to get a rough idea of where I want things to go. And uh, then I would continue to finesse this for uh, for a few minutes. So I'm going to do that off camera so we don't waste a lot of time. And then I'll come back and show you the results. Okay, we're back with uh, a finished blocking pass. You can kind of see it from the perspective here. Actually, we'll do it from the camera first. So you can see I took the time to uh, do some kind of a uh, stretchy rubber hose type uh, legs, which was a lot of fun. Um, got some fun shapes there. And then here's that stylized run I kind of wanted to do. I kind of wanted her hips to hit a line and just kind of ride it straight along while her legs do all the work. Um, so again, this is still super, super rough. Uh, we'll look at it from the perspective here so you can see it kind of above head. So she's still, uh, whoops. She's kind of zigzagging all over the place. Um, which is cool. And so at this stage, um, I would think about uh, getting ready to, to do the repo trick. And I'm sorry I keep calling it a repo trick and a par, uh, but uh, that's because the, the lingo we use at Rhythm is quite a bit different than most other places. Uh, this thing alone is called something different uh, everywhere you go. Uh, we call it a par at Rhythm. We called it a world mover in school. Here it's called a, a placer or a placement tool. Um, so if I say par, that's actually what I mean is this guy here. 
Um, so, and at this stage, you know, all your keys, or all mine, are still in stepped mode, and that run cycle ended up being almost uh, frame by frame, this part in here. And it seems like a lot of work, but actually it'll make cleanup a lot easier. Uh, I don't have to worry so much about smoothing something out and not knowing what the computer is going to do uh, with those controls. So before I actually do the repo trick, I'm going to use uh, one of my new favorite tools. Um, again, I should open up the picker here. We're going to grab the body and then go to MG Tools and use the path tracker here. And uh, so I've got my body selected. I'm going to add it into the list here and you'll see in my perspective camera um, I can see the path that the actual body is taking. Even though the uh, master control is what's moving through space, this way I can see kind of you know where I messed up since I pretty much did all this just by placing the uh, master control around. So I've got a lot of uh, kind of zigzags and a lot of areas where it doesn't make sense. A lot of cleanup needs to be done. Um, so this uh, this path tracker makes it really easy. So I can just grab the, every once in a while I have to reselect this manipulator, it's annoying. Okay, so you can kind of go between keys, and again I need to make sure this is set to a world, and you can kind of adjust as needed, and, you, and you'll see the, uh, the knots update for the, uh, for the body. So here she gets kind of tangled up. Uh, so this is a pretty fun process. Uh, this tool makes it a lot easier to clean up. And it actually doesn't take that long. So I'm kind of doing this roughly right now, but uh, it's because it's hard to talk and do this stuff at the same time. But I would uh, take a look at it from the cam a uh, window as well to make sure I'm getting kind of the shapes I want. This part here where she takes the corner is a fun one so I can rotate the uh, the control kind of however I want to. So it's a really useful way to clean up these zigzags and make it a little bit smoother. So I'm going to do that now off camera again and then I'll be back shortly. Okay so here it is a little bit more cleaned up. It's still not perfect but you can see from the path that a lot of those zigzags are smoothed out. I'm getting much cleaner um, path of action for her to take. So we'll take a look at that from the camera window here. Okay, uh, that door actually is supposed to be moving right now, so ignore that. Anyways, so this um, this path tracker tool is great. Now this is utilizing something Maya already does. You can put a motion path on anything. It's just a really handy way to add multiple controls and remove them with the trash can here easily. You can change the color of the paths, the frames, and the keys, uh, which is useful if you have more than one object. Um, and you can also toggle the visibility of them using this guy here. So it's just a really nice uh, interface to keep track of it all. And then when you're done, you just grab it and hit delete. And that's it. So, uh, at this phase, I am just about ready to use the, uh, the repo tool. So I would go to my keyframe tool over here, open up the MG Anim Recorder, um, and then I would just grab, again, all the controls uh, here. And in this case, actually, like I talked about in the last video, all I need is the body and both feet because you'll see um, when I grab the body the pole vectors and the arms are everything's going with it. Um, actually I need the head too because I've still got the, uh, the head on orient so I'm gonna delete this. I mean I got the head rotations set to uh, move independently of the rest. So I grab her body legs and the head last. Um, so there's your list. Uh, and then when I'm here I would select all. And now in this case I don't need the whole time frame. 
uh, because you can see the master controller over here only moves uh, here at frame 169. So I would select from 169 to the very end and then I would hit record all. Now, I'm not actually going to do it on camera because this file, uh, the size of this file with all the keys and everything, it crashes my pretty much every time when I try to do this while running the screen capture software. Uh, but I, uh, I have had no problems at all when I'm doing it by itself. It's just the screen cap software really, uh, really bogs down the processor. So I'm going to pause, do that off screen, and then I'll be right back. Okay, so here we are. With uh, we just finished the uh, MG Recorder tool, and you can see. The character is running all over the place and the master controller is back at the world default. Uh, so that worked out great. I'll play this once from the cam main. I have to go to the, um, Wiz Palace. You know, the toilet thing. It's a bathroom! It's called a bathroom! Okay, so uh, I don't know if you could hear that. I actually don't know how to set this up so it records the sound from the computer and from my microphone but um, but basically this is pretty much uh, pretty much done as far as I'm concerned uh, got everything working well and this uh, using this MG recorder trick made this uh, that much easier uh, to handle this whole this whole run stuff at the end here probably took around uh, four or five hours using that technique and Blocking it out was as, as little as, you know, an hour and a half or so. Uh, cleanup took a little bit of time, but um, huge time saver. Uh, and you can see the full animation. Uh, I'll post a link to it in the description. It's posted on my YouTube account as well. Um, and this was the February competition. It came in 17th place. Uh, didn't do that great. Uh, I think it was a little bit too exaggerated and cartoony for most people's style. Uh, but really the point of this piece for me was to see how far I could push this rig and uh, see what the rig is capable of. And as you can see here, it can do quite a bit of uh, stretchy, crazy stuff. It's a lot of fun to work with. Um, and the face is great. You can see here I, I made a huge effort to uh, push the face as far as I could for each beat in the dialogue. So when I scroll through here, you'll see her go from kind of some fun pretty fun faces to some pretty exaggerated stuff to you know almost a completely different character here uh, some really great shapes step through here a little bit really fun cheeks there <laughs> so an awesome character uh, the face is really great the only thing is it takes a little bit of time because there are so many controls here in the picker. A lot of great squash and stretch, stretch controls. Uh, and a lot of shapes you want to make, there's probably three or four different ways to make that shape, but only one good one. So you want to make sure you don't use uh, too many controls and, and end up fighting against each other. Um, so anyways, that pretty much wraps it up. If there are any questions, feel free to um, make a comment and I will try to make a video addressing it. Uh, thanks for watching.